Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BTC Radio Audiobook and ASMR. I'm thrilled to be your host today. Over the next few minutes, we'll embark on a journey through the airwaves, exploring diverse topics, sharing stories. So, sit back, relax, and let us be the soundtrack to your day. Stay tuned for an unforgettable experience right here. Tonight you are listening to The Curse of Nagana. She's dead. A knife in her back. It's the curse. No, 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 don't get excited. Parker. At your elbow, sir. Where were you when this happened? At the door of your room, sir. I just started to go inside when the young lady came hurrying up, very much frightened, and said she had something very important to tell me. What was it? I don't know, sir. About that time, the strange moan came from the upper galleries, and the poor girl nearly fainted with fear. She was speechless for a moment, then turned and ran down the dark hallway. An instant later, I heard her scream and the crash as she fell. It's... it's the work of the devil. Not the devil, Sir Edward. A devil. Parker, where's Nagana? I couldn't say, sir. But my psychological reaction to this particular situation... Oh, silence, Parker. There's too much noise going on around here. Now go and see if you can locate Nagana. Search the premises thoroughly. If you find him and he acts up in any way, don't take any chances. Use that automatic and shoot to kill. You surely don't think that Nagana had any... I'm not saying what I think yet. I was a fool, though, for not listening to Anne when she wanted to talk with me. The person responsible for her death evidently knew that she had some information of value to impart and acted accordingly. That information was undoubtedly a clue to this very strange mystery. A curse has descended upon the house of Ramsay. A curse, I tell you, and it's driving me insane. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Mad for an eternity. That's what it said. Mad for an eternity. I... Edward! 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 He's only fainted, Lady Sybil, from the strain. I'll carry him into the living room. You get some water. It's the curse. It's the curse. There, there, dear. You'll feel better after you drink this. You're acting like a child, Sir Edward. I'm sorry, Doctor. I shouldn't have asked you to come here. Nonsense. Everything is going to be all right now. No! What the... Why, it's Parker. He's lying in a heap at the foot of the hall stairs. Oh. Parker, Parker, old fellow, are you hurt? I saw it. I saw it. I don't care what you saw, Parker. Are you hurt? No, no, I'm not hurt. But it was horrible. What are you talking about? The skull. Oh, we'll all be crazy before we leave this place. Begging your pardon, sir, Edward, I... This is no time to bandy words. Where did you see the skull? Up in the gallery, sir. I couldn't find the garner in any of the other rooms, so I went up there. Then I saw it, leering at me with horrible malice, from one of those paintings of Sir Guy and it seemed to come to life and move toward me. Let's go upstairs and look. No, Lady Ravenel. It might be dangerous. Remember, there are no electric lights on the upper floor. We'd best turn in and get some sleep and investigate the gallery in the morning. You mean to tell me that you... you can sleep in this house tonight? With the body of Anne lying in the hall? And that... that thing up in the gallery? Certainly I intend to sleep. And a good night's rest would be one of your best medicines. Dr. Meredith is right, Edward. Well, perhaps. So you went along to bed, Sybil. I would like to be alone for a while. I'll retire after a bit. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'll leave the door open, Sir Edward. If you want anything, just call. Thank you, Doctor. Do you really mean to sleep in this room tonight, sir? No, Parker. There won't be time. When I carried Sir Edward to the couch a few minutes ago, I rubbed rosin on his shoes to make them squeak. We may have to follow him a little later, and the corridors in this old castle are very dark. We'll wait here and see what happens. Nagana is still unaccounted for, and unless I miss my guess, there's going to be plenty of excitement before the night is over, perhaps murder, or worse. Do you, do you hear it, sir? That isn't all I hear, Parker. Listen. It's Sir Edward. He's creeping along the corridor and his face is twisted terribly. His eyes are absolutely mad. Keep back from that door until he gets out of sight. Then we'll follow him. See, Doctor. Lady Sybil is shadowing him. Now they both disappeared up the dark hall. Come on, but keep your automatic handy. Mm -hmm. 
He's entered the gallery, and Lady Sybil slipped in after him. Be careful, Parker, and don't make any noise. We've got to reach that open door. Look, look, it's the skull again. Sir Edward's standing in front of it, his hands raised. Lady Sybil is crouched back against the wall in the darkness. Parker, get your automatic ready. That picture is coming to life. The skull is no longer dead. It's a living, twisted face set atop a writhing, grotesque body that is lunging forward. It's a living human being emerging from that picture. Or I myself am mad. Do you see the hands, Doctor? They're moving up to the throat of that mad thing, and its mouth is opening as if to speak. To strangle oneself is better than to be mad for an eternity. Do you hear, Ramsay? To strangle oneself. This is ghastly, Doctor. He's obeying that fiendish creature's words. His hands are going up to his throat. <laughs> Sir Edward has collapsed. Lady Sybil is attacking that horrible picture with a knife. Can't we help her? Shh, we've got to see this through, Parker. Nagana hasn't shown up yet. <laughs> ha! It's Nagana. He stepped out from behind another picture and he's springing toward Lady Sybil. <laughs> I missed him, Parker. Oh, thank God you're here. Uh, Sir Edward's only fainted, Lady Sybil. Watch after him while Parker and I run Nagana down. Parker, flash a light around this other picture. I thought so. A hidden door and the passage leads upwards. Turn out that light and keep your gun handy. a guy, Ramsay, in a trance. He's got him stretched on an altar of sacrifice, bound hand and foot. He's kneeling over him. Uh, Don't make a move until that fiendish devil doctor brings the guy out of the trance. Otherwise, we may never be able to revive him. Uh, 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 uh. Awake, awake, thou traitor, who would dare desecrate the gods. Awake, for the moon is full, and it is time for the sacrifice to the great Jakota. He's coming out of the trance. <laughs> so, so you're awake at last, sir guy. <laughs> Your powers are weak compared to those of Nagana. Now your heart shall be offered as a sacrifice to the gods you have betrayed. He's raising a knife to plunge into Sir Guy's breast. You only wounded him, and he's run out of the parapet. See him, silhouetted in the moonlight, hands upraised. Ah! Ah! He fell over the parapet. So, the curse on the house of Ramsay is ended. My, my psychological reaction to this particular situation... You're quite right, Parker, but forget it. It's practically forgotten, sir. Now let's take the guy downstairs to his son and Lady Sybil. Then find the strongest drink in the cellar. For both of us, sir? Both of us. At your elbow, sir? Oh, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Weird Tales Produced by Hollywood Radio Attractions The cast, in order of their appearance Dr. Meredith, Cyril Delavanti Parker, the butler, Richard Carl Lady Sybil Ravenel, Florence Britton Sir Edward Ramsey, John Harron and the maid, Lucille Anaya. Nagana, John Ince. Interpretive chant, 
by Pierre White, directed by Irving Fogel.